What's going on, everyone? Hello, Binary Tech Labs here, and welcome to part two of the series. Today, I thought we'd have a go at ES Presence and see if we could get it loaded into our Home Assistant instance. If you want to learn more about presence detection or how to set up your MQTT broker, watch part one of this video series, which should be appearing on your screen right about now. As this tutorial assumes you have a basic understanding of MQTT and how it works. Also, if there is a lot of interest, I could also produce a video on Room Assistant for presence detection, which uses Raspberry Pis instead of ESP32s that we'll be using today. But this, of course, is highly dependent on Raspberry Pi availability. As is customary, links to all hardware and software I use, as well as recommendations, will be included in the description below. So, if this is what you're here for, let's get started. Aside from having Home Assistant and an MQTT broker, which we set up in part one, you'll also need an ESP32 and a smartphone. But who doesn't have one of those these days? There are also many other varieties of device trackers you can check out, such as a smartwatch or beacons, and there are many types available, such as Tile or the beacons I received from Gao RFID, which are configured to utilize an iBeacon or an Eddystone configuration. In this video, I'll be utilizing a Gao RFID beacon, and having these different device trackers will give you a few more options. The ES Presence setup appears to be quite simple and can be accomplished in three stages firmware installation, base station configuration, and home assistant configuration. Let's go through this together and see how it goes. You have two options for installing the firmware on your ESP32. The first is an automatic installation from the browser, in which you simply plug the ESP32 device into your computer via USB, select the type from a drop down list, and finally hit connect which will open a window where you can select the correct serial port. Just make sure that you have your ESP32 plugged into your actual computer that you're using and don't get tripped up like I usually do and plug my ESP32 into my Raspberry Pi instance and then sit there scratching my head trying to figure out why this isn't working. So the ESP32 that I'm using is a generic ESP32, but you do have other ones to choose from in this list if you're using a different one. So once the ESP is selected, we just hit connect and we scroll down to the USB device. So we will select to install ES Presence. We want to erase the device. And yes, we do want to install. So this is going to go through installing it. And when it completes, our ESP32 will be flashed with the ES Presence software. I will just pause the video, and when this is completed, I will bring the video back. So there it is completed. I would just hit next and close out. So that's how easy it was to flash ES Presence on our ESP32. Now, the second option is a manual installation, and you have to start by downloading the latest firmware, which when you go over to the latest firmware, you just find your ESP32 bin in the assets. I'm using the latest and I am not using the pre-releases. So I downloaded this ESP32 bin and the second thing that I did was I downloaded and installed the ESP Home Flasher tool and if you follow this link to the GitHub page the setup instructions are pretty straightforward and it's pretty easy to do. So once you have those two things completed, the next step is to connect your ESP device to your computer, which ours already is. Start ESP Home Flasher. And then same process, we will select the USB device. We will then select our bin file that I downloaded. And then just click on Flash ESP. Now this one built into it is a little bit more straightforward. It does have the console log right here in the program so you can see what is taking place while it is going on. And I found that the ESP Flasher is a little bit faster than the web browser version. Now with the web browser version, you can get the console to come up at the same time as it, you are flashing it. And that is just by going to the top and opening up another tab, 
to the terminal and then connecting to that ESP. When it's finished flashing, we'll be able to configure the Wi-Fi and MQTT settings. So you will notice a new SSID being broadcast and you can either connect to it with your phone or you can connect to it from your computer. I'm just going to go ahead and connect to it with my computer and then once I'm connected to it, I will load up this IP address, which will provide us a captive portal where we can enter our Wi-Fi information, MQTT broker settings and the room name for our ESP32. The rest of the settings we will leave as default and save. The reason being is that when we configure the ESP32 in Home Assistant, we'll be able to quickly adjust the configuration of our ESP32, such as the discovery distance, which you may have to experiment with depending on where your ESP32 is in your room and how big your room is. All right, I did connect to that SSID and I did load up the web page uh, at the IP address, which you see listed here. So that brings up the configuration where you will select your Wi Fi network name. You'll enter in your Wi Fi password, the room name that you want to give it. I'm going to call mine Living Room. And then you enter in your MQTT settings. And the MQTT broker IP address is just simply the IP address of your Home Assistant instance. And if you don't know what that is, there are a lot of ways to get it. To name a few, you can get it from your router, or you can also go to Home Assistant and click on Configuration, and then Add-ons, Backups, and Supervisor. Clicking on System, and then under the Host, you can see the IP address here. The default port the broker runs on is 1883, and it should be that port unless you changed it in the configuration of your MQTT broker. And the username you set up from part one of the series will be the username that you're using to connect to your MQTT broker. As far as the preferences go, I uncheck the status LED light so that it is not consistently flashing. You can have it on if you want, but depending on where your ESP32 is in the room, at nighttime it may become a little bit annoying to see a constant flashing light. And the rest of the information in here we will leave at default. So I will just go ahead and finish filling out the password information for my setup and then I will click save. It will reboot the ESP32 and then we will move on to the next step which is going to be configuring Home Assistant. After you do click the save on your configuration settings, you do have to manually hit the restart button that is at the top and when you do that it will restart the ESP32 give you this screen here where it says bye and now we can move on to the next step to establish our MQTT integration in Home Assistant which is going to require the ID of our device tracker. So let's move over to Home Assistant. So there are many ways to get this information. We can dig into the devices about me settings if it's a smartphone or a watch. We can use apps on our phone like NRF Connect, and this is linked in the description below, good for both Android and iPhone devices. There is a link for both. And NRF Connect will scan for nearby Bluetooth devices. We can see devices coming near the ESP32 we flashed in the console log of the ESP Home Flasher tool that we used. And you can see all of the MAC addresses of the devices that it is seeing close to it. But my favorite is using the MQTT Explorer tool because we not only see the device ID and MAC address, but we also get the state topics that we're going to need to configure our MQTT broker. So if you open up MQTT Explorer, hit New Connection, you'll fill out your information. I've just given it a name. As I said, the host is the IP address of your Home Assistant instance, the port 1883, and your username and password Click Save so you don't have to re-enter this information. All right, if we expand out the ES presence, we see our devices. So to get the ID, this is what I want to track here is this iBeacon. So if we select that and then just hit Copy to Clipboard, we now have the ID 
that we'll be looking for, which is right here. And the state topic that we're going to choose for it to listen to or subscribe to. So whenever that device enters in a room, the state topic we're going to use is ES presence slash rooms. And that way, when you have multiple ESP devices, it will pick up this device entering into any of the ES presence slash rooms. You can get to your configuration.yaml either by using Studio Code Server or the file editor. I will make this bigger. So we go into our configuration.yaml and then we just add the following. So we're adding a sensor. It's going to be a platform sensor based on MQTT room. The device ID of the device that I am tracking is an iBeacon. I'm just going to name it iBeacon. The state topic is just going to be ES presence slash rooms. And I got that in MQTT Explorer by clicking on rooms and then just click copy to clipboard and then you can paste it in here. You can change the timeout and away timeout to suit the room that you're in. And this will be dependent on, again, how big your room is. Once that configuration is in there, we will have to restart Home Assistant. So we'll just close our configuration go to configuration we'll go to settings check our configuration it is valid and then we will restart home assistant making those changes in our configuration yaml is subscribing our mqtt broker to that topic and it will listen for that so i have auto discovery on my mqtt so now that we've restarted, it has picked up our MQTT. So let's hit configure. And again, the broker is going to be the IP address. Okay, so now that we have our MQTT integration configured, we will one more time restart Home Assistant, and then it will pick up the device for our ESP32. So configuration, settings, I always check my configuration, and restart Home Assistant. All right, Home Assistant has restarted, and it has picked up our one device with our 11 entities. So if we click into the device, we can now see our ESP32 has a sensor connected. And as I mentioned, the configuration options here we can change. Uh, yours might show Active Scan as off. I just turn Active Scan on and the status LED to off. My max distance, I'm going to change to 4. Again, this is a number that you will have to play around with for your room. And since we made the configuration change to our YAML file, we should now be able to see the iBeacon as well, which is going to be sensor.iBeacon, which we can see. Okay, I realize this video is becoming a little long, but to understand how this works, Let's add two automations, one to turn on a light when our device is reported as in the living room, and one to turn off our light when our device is no longer reported as in the living room. So we get there, we go to configuration, we go to automations, and create automation. We start with an empty automation. You can name this whatever you want. And for our trigger, we're going to trigger a state on our iBeacon entity. And that state change is going to change to two. Living room. So when the beacon changes to living room, the action is going to call a service, which is going to be to turn on another entity, which will be the light. Now we hit save. And go back to our automations. So now we see it on. And then we create another automation. Put the light off. Again, it's going to be a state change from the iBeacon going to the state. Since I'm only using, since I'm only using one ESP32, the state is going to be not home. Now we're going to now, again, call service. And the service is going to be switch turn off and the entity that we choose again is the light.
and save it. So going back into our automations, we can see the two listed here. Um, I'm just going to run the actions on the light on because the beacon is currently in the living room or picked up in the living room. Okay, so if we go over to our overview, we can see that the light is on. Now, if I walk the beacon away from the ESP32, once Home Assistant registers the beacon being out of the living room, it will shut off this light, which it has now. So now, if I come back into the living room with the beacon, once Home Assistant picks up the beacon as reported in the living room, it will automatically turn this light on. and it now registers as being in the living room and it turns the light on. So as we can see, it takes some time for Home Assistant to register the device in the living room and it takes some time to register the device when it leaves the living room. So that won't be the best option for turning on a light when you enter a room, but it can work for turning off lights or devices when you leave the room. As a result, using this integration as a trigger in your automations is not an ideal solution. The best solution is to use a motion detector to turn on a light when you enter a room and have it stay on as a condition if the device tracker is still in that room. So if you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate that. I hope you discovered something useful today. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below, and I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.